Okay, 6.3 binomial radical expressions. And the first concept is when you have radical expressions with adding or subtracting, then the principle that you can apply for the simplifying addition and subtraction with radical expressions is very similar to what you could do with combining like terms. In, um, whether the multipliers of the radical are same or different and as long as the radical part are the same then you can combine those terms just like you do with like terms in variable terms right okay so then let's see examples here okay simplify In example number one. Then um, the examples that I intentionally picked are from the practice problem. So um, if you had any questions from any of the practice problems, and then it might be the same one. Okay, so number one, and if we have square root of 27 plus square root of 75 then the main idea is unless we see the radical parts get the same index and same radicands the radicands what i mean by radicands are the values under the same the radical right and we we cannot combine so we have to check we have to check if we can rewrite each of the radi radical expressions so that we can recognize the same index of the radi radical expression and um, with the same radi radicands, right? So then I noticed 27 can be factored as 3 times 3 times 3. So it's the same as square root of 3 cubed and 75 can be square root of 75 is 25 times 3 so it could be 5 square and 3 here then since the radical that we have is square root only the perfect square number the only the parts that was squared inside can come out then we can rewrite square root of 3 cubed as 3 comes out and 1, 3 remains inside. And the second radical, square root of 5 squared times 3, and we can take 5 out of the square root, but 1, 3 remains inside. Then in that case, I recognize radical 3 the square root of 3 square root of 3 from each term then in this case just like we did combining like terms and then this is consequently total 8 of radical 3 okay so it's easy simple and then i hope I, I i think there's no questions for this okay then let's move on to the second one. I also picked this example from one of the practice problems here. Then example number two. Then now this is not square root. It's cube root of 16 minus three times of cube root notice that three is multiplier and another tiny little three right next to the radical notation is index cube root of 54 plus two times of cube root of 250. okay so now 
the radicals for all the terms that we are given with are cube root, right? So then what we notice is we can simplify each radical expression term by taking cubed part out of the cube root. So we look for the cubed part. Then cube root of 16 and notice 16 is 2 to the power of 4. Okay, then second one, 3 times cube root 54. And now what we are looking for is cube number. Then 54, you can factor in some other types, but you can notice 54 is twice of 27. The 27 is the perfect cube number. So it's cube, the three cubed, right? So that is 54. And now two times cube root of 250. 250 if you okay so this is big number so we can just factor separately we can just see how factor this big number here okay notice 250 can be 25 times 10 then 25 is 5 times 5 and 10 can be 5 times 2. So then 250 is for sure 5 cubed, 5 times 5 times 5, 2. Then now I notice that I can rewrite cube root of the radicand 2 all over the three terms. Then now the first cube root of 2 to the power of 4 will be 2 cubed out and then cube root of 1, 2 left. Then second one, 3 is already there. But what I take out is another 3. So then this 3 and this 3 comes out and then it's going to make 9. Then what's left? The 2 is left. And now, 2 was already there, but what I'm taking out is 5 cubed, and then 5 can come out cube root. So then 2 already existed times nearly came out 5, we'll multiply each other, it's 10, and then cube root of 2. Now I check the radical parts of each term are the like terms now. Then we can just simply combine like terms. So 2 minus 9, negative 7 plus 10 is 3. So total 3 of cube root of 2 is there. Okay, any question? Okay, then that was first main idea, simplifying radical expression. And second main idea are how we can multiply binomial radical expression. What is the meaning of binomial? The so bi means two. So it's going to be two terms multiplying two terms. Yes, good, good. Good job, Jaewon. Yeah. So then let's take a look at example number three. And this is also from practice problem. If we are supposed to multiply a minus radical two, then this is the binomial radical expression. Multiplying 4 plus radical 3. And 4 plus radical 3 is another 
binomial radical expressions and we're supposed to multiply them then you need to remember how to multiply properly binomial and binomial is we usually call it boil right and we have to multiply first and first in outer and outer inner and inner and then the last term and last term okay then let's multiply that oh i just noticed that i copy this one incorrectly the first binomial the radical part was not square root of 2 it's square root of 12 square root of 12 okay then um i guess you can do it afterwards but i noticed that square root of 12 can be simplified right so then let's do that way for this example then let's rewrite square root of 12 so 12 is 4 times 3 then 4 one of the factors four is perfect square number that we can take out of the square root. So then it's gonna be four comes out of square root as a two and what remains inside? Three. And four plus radical three. And there's no further simplification happening in the second binomial. Then we apply the FOIL there, right? So then Eight times four will make 32. Then eight times radical three is positive eight radical three. Then inner and inner, negative two radical three times four is negative eight radical three. Then negative 2 radical 3 times radical 3 will be negative 2 then now notice this one is radical 3 times radical 3 included in the multiplication what is radical 3 times radical 3 this is 3 right so then this is times three here because of this and i need you guys to recall how we did on multiplying complex number this could be projected to the method that we did in semester one how we can multiply complex number and complex number right and when we multiply complex number which are the binomial types and at the end we always encounter the i times i and we notice the i times i is i square which is negative one right and then it's very similar structure happening there then i can simplify each term it's 32 and now i notice they are canceling it's a zero and then this is negative negative six so if i take away six from 32 is 26 then even if you didn't simplify square root of 12 and the result will be the same right so if you are curious about and then you already had this method and then i can recommend you guys to do without simplifying radical 12 as well okay and now the next one will be same but it's quickly done example number four this is also from the practice problem 
then if I have radical 5 plus radical 6, multiplying another binomial radical 5 and radical 6, then of course you can do FOIL here. But if you FOIL and see how each term after you're multiplying all four times properly and you will see some patterns, then I need you guys to recall the structure that we learned from first semester again. Is there anybody who noticed that what pattern that I am mentioning over here? Anybody remembers? I emphasize this. Difference of squares, yes. Good job, yes. So this is difference Squares pattern, a plus b times a minus b. Since once you FOIL these two binomials each other, then they always gonna be canceling midterms and then it's gonna be square of first term and difference with the square of second term. Then, Make sure you get the same result when you go through the FOIL procedure. But since we know this, we can just go ahead, square of first term, which is five. Because if you square, square root of five, and then it's five. And square of second term, which is six, and then they're supposed to be always get the difference. And then this is negative one, so fast. It's the matter of awareness if you already know the pattern and then you could just go ahead and then right away. Oh, Maya was knowing that too. Good. Okay. And so that was the second main idea, the binomial multiplication with radical expressions. Okay, so now. The third one is rationalization. And I picked two more examples for the rationalization of the radical expressions from practice problems as well. And this is very similar to the conjugation of complex number. And remember what we did in semester one then when we had complex number on the denominator, then we conjugate that complex number from the denominator so that we can have real number on the denominator. The very similar principle, rationalization of the denominators here here is we would make denominators with radical expressions into rational number. So literally we are rationalizing radical denominators, right? And if you have denominator with any square root, then you can multiply the square root the same, exactly identical square root, top and bottom, so that you can get rationalized denominator. So in the instruction video that you already saw, shows two or three of that rationalization there. So I would not repeat that one, but um, I found this problem 
from the practice problem in when you have cube root on the denominator. And I will show you that one, okay? So then if we have cube roots on denominators, then you have to make You need multiplier top and bottom with cube root with the radicin, the same radicin from the original cube root, but you need perfect square number under there. Okay, I, I would just show you the actual problem here. So, the ones that I saw from the practice problem is this um, example number five. It's 18 minus six cube root of three. And the denominator is not simply square root, it's cube root of nine here. Okay, then, then, what you need to multiply top and bottom is, since our goal is we get rid of cube root, right? So if I just multiply cube root of nine again, and then it's not gonna get rid of cube root, but instead I will do cube root of nine square. So the next step, consequently, it's going to be cube root of 9 cube so that it get rid of cube root consequently, right? And then I have to do same on denominator, I mean, numerator side, right? Then... These two will be just nine. And then this is consequently cube root of nine cube, right? But what you have to be careful is you have to multiply this, this separately. So then the first term will be 18 cube root of nine square. And second term will be negative six times cube root of inside it was originally have three. And then the purple term is nine square. Then notice Nine square is also three to the power of four. So then consequently in the second step, this will be one three and then four more three. So it's gonna be three to the power of five. Nine square is three to the power of four, and then one more three will make total five three multiplied into, right? Then, set, uh, next step, it's 18. And then as I already explained, nine square is three to the power of four, right? So it's gonna be cube root of three to the power of four 
then it's six cube root of three to the power of fifth. And then this is just nine, right? Then I can simplify further here. 18 was already there, but I can take three out of that. So 18 times three is 54, and then cube root of three is left. And then now I can also take out three cubed out of the second term, and six was already existed, and the six times three, and then it's gonna be minus 18, and then cube root. But in this case, three squared remains inside, and then it's gonna be just nine there. Then it's over nine. Then now, notice, Multiply 54, multiply a negative 18, and 9 are divisible. So you can further simplify it. Then we will see 9 divide 54, and then it's going to be 6, and cube root of 3. And then 9 divides negative 18, and then it's going to be negative 2, and cube root of 9. Then in this step, now we know the radical part that cannot be simple, simplified further, they are not the same and we cannot combine them. So we stop there. So that's it. Stop there. Okay, any question? How did, uh, how did I get 9 squared? So our goal is we need to have we need to have originally this, but we cannot have radical on the denominator. So in order to get rid of it, and I have to have cube root of 9 and cube root of 9, so that this means cube root of 9 square, right? Then this is also the same cube root of 9 square. If you try calculate separately each expression and the value is going to be exactly the same. So consequently, what I need to multiply top and bottom by for rationalization is cube root of nine squared. So that being said, if you have denominator fourth root of something, then what you need to multiply top and bottom is gonna be fourth root of the same radicand to the power of three. Then if you have denominator fifth root of something, then consequently it's going to be same fifth root, but radicand has to be raised to the power of one less. So that's the structure. Did it help, Karim? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay, cool. Okay, then any other questions? I tried to cover any problems that I expect to have some questions already. So hopefully I cover everything. But um, if you guys don't have immediate question right now, it's okay. But um, if you have any questions later and feel free to email me, okay? As long as it's before the school ends and then I can answer your question. Okay, are we all good?